今まで13人殺した。My God. そこらのアホに比べりゃ、oh, 自分は強い方だと思ってる。Compared to the average idiot. 生きがってるやるのガキ。Oh my God. Look at the detail. This is not the glory of war. This is a massacre. As expected, of course. Oh, it's the guy. Whoa. Oh, that's rotoscoping, isn't it? That's beautiful. A real name. Is it still fun to kill? Snake. The sound effect, though. Come on, man. As if you'll be in the position to do anything like that. <laughs> Huh. This is how it feels. He's telling him to know his place. He should have known his place. How about this reality check? Pain. Sounds about right. Oh, he left him. Oh. He's got to jump on him. <laughs> Chance. Oh. Oh. He's been training. <laughs> he must be impressed, right? Oh. No. Yeah, he's gonna have to use these, these types of tactics now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, he let his guard down. Now that's more of an even fight. Look at this. A proud lion. He must have cracked a few ribs. Look how good this looks. I mean, you're... Come on, you gotta go, you gotta go. Okay. He's not just a brute. Mm, mutual respect. Mm. I mean, he did his part. He's hoping it wouldn't go that long and maybe Kettle would come to his senses, but. Oh. You gotta face the music. You caused this. <laughs> yeah, the brutality of it is like right in our faces, in great detail. Yeah, it's, it's, bringing, it's bringing back terrible memories right at the end for her. Oh. Like hell. Oh. 
She can't survive that trip. Mm. Is there such a place out there for us? There's a mythical place. Man, this voice acting is just phenomenal. A better place for her. And the children. Oh, getting chills right now. I've said it before. It's a tragic existence. Oh, that's a special moment. That meant a lot to her. This is something they can carry. Oh. Just me left. It's kind of similar to Thorfinn's mindset earlier, right? Oh. My god, this is so good. Huh? Are you gonna say it? Oh, is she gone, gone now? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Thor's. He did that, didn't he? This is full circle right here. He knows it's a lost cause. Wow. Yeah, the heavens are calling her now. Chills right now. All over my body. Oh. Just like Thor in episode one. Oh, that's right, Leaf. He remembers. He's always latched onto that, held onto that. And you know, Leaf must be thinking, I'm looking at Thor's right now. This is Thorfinn, son of Thor's, in front of me. Yeah, I was about to say. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to bring him. Oh my god. He'll do it too. If he can get to him. Thorfinn knows all about this. How is he so calm? Oh, he is seeing red. I think that was needed. Oh my god. His performance is just incredible, isn't it? He certainly understands that killing Asklad wouldn't have changed anything. Oh. How about this? These two men, these two friends, just letting it all out, crying. Constant chills, you know? Oh, come on. Come on. He understands. This is truly Son of Thor's now. Kami wa 
ここ離れるんだ。なぜ but now, so Motakido, Imawa Sugoko Korashko Zatomita Toro, Kunuto, a Hakunin Zengo, and Heshka Tretina Gata Donna Maruk Korondemo, Ikite Modori Dakena. Yeah, he sees something special in front of him there. Oh, those eyes. Wow. That's just like a uh, canute, right? Back in uh, season one, episode 18. Wow. Right then, episode 20. Uh, I mean, you know, at this point, this anime, this season is essentially on this incredible run, iconic run, even. Um, yeah, so as a whole, this episode is just uh, really fantastic. It's quite a phenomenal episode. Um, and the thing is, I still have four more episodes to go. My God. I mean, the setup there for the next episode, that alone promises to be something really quite fascinating, something uh, intriguing, something incredible, right? Because finally, finally, the reunion you know, that I've, I've been speaking of for some time now, it's finally kind of in place. The prospect of it is as close as it's ever been because, because Thorfinn decided that, you know what? I'm not going to leave. I'm going to go talk to Knut. Let's save some lives here that could be lost. And that moment right at the end there, you know, that look in his eyes. Wow, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's the look of a man who who is so sure of his purpose a man that now has an unbreakable resolve this is a thorfinn who is proactive right he he said as much he said just stopping it you know just stopping myself from it is not enough i have to be proactive i have to atone right i have to make a difference and he's doing it he's he's about to give it his best shot for sure right um, so, you know, he, he might be a pacifist, but he's not passive. He's certainly not passive, not at this moment. And, you know, that look in his eyes and just the actual, uh, placement and the framing of the shot itself as well, you know, it's really quite reminiscent of Canute himself back in season one, episode 18. I thought it was a great callback to that, right? Because there in episode 18, you also had a man, uh, who, who has a strong purpose, a newfound resolve, unbreakable resolve even. Um, but now, you know, these two are destined to meet once again, right? Is it going to be as easy as him just walking up to Prince Canute and getting to talk, sorry, King Canute and getting to talk to him? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be just that easy. I mean, there's still an ongoing battle, right? Uh, even though they had to retreat because, you know, I, I suppose rumors um start to spread that oh okay you know prince canute sorry god damn it king canute is under attack at the moment um you know so they have no idea it's just one person but of course that one person is not just any one person right it's thorgil the man the madman almost almost pulled it off uh i mean ultimately he made the smart choice and he had to retreat and you know i'm kind of interested in seeing how he'll be the next time i see him how he'll be reacting to things um how he'll be reacting to the situation at hand but of course king canute actually surprised him right all that training finally came in handy right uh it was really kind of clutch 
he saved himself from getting beheaded essentially and you see Thorgil's reaction you know it's one of shock and he is really quite impressed as well right you could see that there is a mutual respect there Thorgil you write that in there after after uh Knut blocks that blow right I mean it kind of cost him his sword um at the same time and you know it appeared that he kind of sprained his hand or his wrist as well um I mean it, it is a strike from Thorgil after all but you see that immediately um Thorgil had a lot of respect for him he did and and then of course on the flip side as Thorgil does kind of escape and retreat you see that King Canute also has quite a bit of respect for this man this bold man as he called him a man that he could still you know use essentially that he'd be quite an asset to have still to be on his side right but you know that's highly unlikely exceedingly unlikely I mean it's been so clear for some time now that Thorgil is much more than just a brute he has a mind for strategy and he's bold because he can back himself. He's got the skill set to back it. And one aspect of this episode that I really, really enjoyed and I really appreciate is, you know, Leif Erikson being around for all of this, being around Thorfinn for all of this. Because at this point, he is truly getting to see Thorfinn, the son of Thors. He is truly getting to see the changed man that he is. Right? The, the man he has become. Both us, the audience, and Leif Erikson can see throughout that episode that you know, Thorfinn is now essentially f- you know, following in his father's footsteps. He's channeling his father. He has become his father in many ways. Leif Erikson must be thinking, you know, Thors, Thors would have been so proud of you. So proud of you. Um, and, you know, it's clearly by design that at many parts of this episode, uh, you know, mainly in the second half, and it certainly is a tale of two halves for sure, isn't it? It's quite the contrast, actually, because, you know, of course, it's a bit of a somber second half as I do get the final goodbye to Arnheed as she moves on. And, you know, honestly speaking, I think, yeah, this is this is good. This is the right time to um, send her off. You know, if this kind of leaked into the next episode, then, you know, I would have been a little bit... Uh, critical of that you know then it would have felt like it is dragging on but there's no need for that of course because it doesn't drag on into the next episode it concludes here rightfully so and really quite effectively and it's the scene that just packs this emotional punch it is just oh heartbreaking stuff man and I think the key component of that is the voice acting once again Inner's voice actor and of course Arnheed's voice actor giving it bit of a different take this time right because she is essentially in the last stages of life and the energy is essentially being sapped at this point right it's the last bit of life force essentially that's left and you know you hear it in the voice and I think there's another really incredible moment um you know as both Aner and Thorfinn let it out right lean on each other let it all out cry it's okay I, I love that there's such a focus on that moment you know, these two friends, these two men in that time, really, really just letting it all out, right? And you see, you know, it does affect Snake. Of course, he feels bad about the whole situation in the Arn Heat situation. And then, of course, you know, the sorrow that's on display in front of him. Of course, he feels bad about it. But yeah, you know, speaking of Snake, it'll be interesting to see the rest of his role or his role in the rest of this uh, season um, because yeah, you know, it's at the moment there, there's a bit of a pause in the fighting and all that. And yeah, he gets uh, the master Iron Fist Kettle, as he calls him. Right? <laughs> it's kind of tough to tell if Kettle's badly injured or if he's essentially, you know, perhaps on his own deathbed as well. I don't know. You know, I'm leaning towards badly injured. Didn't really look like, um, you know, it could be at that stage, especially given Snake's own reaction as well. But you know, the thing I love about this is that. You know, Snake, uh, you know, he mentioned something like, oh, you're not going to get off that easy. You know, you have to stick around. You have to face the aftermath. Take the responsibility. Bear the responsibility for everything that happened here. Because you sent these men into hell, right? All this death around us, it's because of you. Even after seeing the massacre, even after seeing all of it, the man still just, I don't know, he's, he's in that state of mind. He just could not... Um, you know, shake out of it. And as expected and as speculated, this 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 isn't the glory of war. It is so unforgiving in its brutality, in its depiction of that brutality, right? It, it puts it in our faces. 
there's no ideas of making it look grand or making it look epic, you know, making it look exciting. No, none of that. There's none of that. I mean, I'm sure it's exciting for some of the the Yom's Vikings and some of the other soldiers, perhaps. You know, some of them are having fun. I mean, there's some fantastic animation on display, for sure. I mean, you know, there's clearly some rotoscoping going on. You know, you see it. You can almost always kind of clock it and pick it out from the rest of the animation, right? Really fluid. And yeah, I, I, it just it just fits so perfectly. You know, as I see one of Snake's men, Badger, is it? And it really is interesting to see Snake's men out there, right? You've got Fox, who is just petrified. You know, there's that one shot of him. His legs are just gone, absolutely gone, right? And then the other guy, Badger, I believe, right? The guy who loses his hand. Um, yeah, he's been around for some time as well. You know, I've seen him on and off uh, for, uh, you know, or throughout the span of the season. Um, yeah, he he's really into it. He certainly has a warrior spirit, that's for sure. I mean, they had to pull him pull him out of there. Um, and wow, you know, that moment Snake kind of comes in to rescue him. Ooh, yeah. Um, you see you see that Snake is reluctantly doing his thing, but also it's a case of essentially, you know, hanging there long enough uh, until the master, you know, Iron Fist Kettle, sees that this is just um, a lost cause, that this is just incredibly... Uh, naive and stupid the idea the whole idea itself you know attacking the king and his um forces but no it didn't come it didn't come and in an episode that is just full of incredible moments and scenes there's actually quite a poignant moment uh earlier on between uh kettle and that one man right that slave essentially he had some interesting things to say to kettle right and of course it, it must have stung him it really must have stung because you know there's truth there is so much truth in the things that man had to say. Ultimately, he is now, um, Kettle that is, he is now in the same position these slaves are in or are so used to being in. And of course, you can understand Aner's, um anger towards Kettle and just the anger at how it's all played out, right? Aren't he just passed on? And this man who caused all of this, right, caused all this pain and uh, aren't he's eventual death. And then of course, the, the, you know, all this fighting, he's still alive. He's still alive out there, right? And, you know, Aner is seeing red. He was absolutely ready to go after him and take him out, snap his neck or something. But, you know, that being said, I, I think, of course, Snake would have stopped Aner from doing so. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, this is one of the key moments uh, of the season, I believe. You know, Thorfinn stopping him and making him realize, making him understand that this is not the path. Because I've been down that path. Killing him is not going to change anything, right? And here you you clearly get a feeling that, you know, at this point in his life, he completely understands that even if he had killed Askeladd all that time ago, nothing would have changed. He understands that completely, right? So he stops Aner from going down that same path, that, that self-destructive path. I've said it so many times at this point, but... You know, Aner and Thorfinn together is one of my favorite duos in anything, really. These two together, I'm just so excited for their future together and the things they might do together. But before that happens, there's another incredible moment. You know, this is as Arnheid has passed on. Yeah, she passed on at this point. But, you know, Thorfinn, again, channeling his inner Thors and really resembling Thors as well at this point, right? Really beginning to look like his father, tells her about that special place. It's that far to the West monologue, essentially. You know, there's a place beyond the reach of slave traders and the flames of war. You know, let's go there together. Let's build that peaceful nation in Vinland. And yeah, I mean, that to me, that's one of the, the most incredible moments of the entire anime, both seasons, because it really feels like such an incredible full circle moment, right? This is, this is essentially a carbon copy of the scene from the first ever episode of the series, Thorfinn is present for that moment as his father does that for that dying slave, right? After paying quite a handsome fee for that dying slave, just so he can have a peaceful death, a proper death, or as proper as possible in his condition, right? That was Thor's. Even a little bit earlier, the chest compressions are right out of that episode as well, right? That's, that's something he sees in person, at that moment, back in episode one of the series. But yeah, you know, Leif Erikson being there, getting to see this, getting to hear this, and 
having this understanding now that okay, this you know this really means something to him. This is something he latched onto and he held f- uh, all that time. But you know, speaking of Leaf, he does have that moment of panic near the conclusion, right? Because he might have felt, oh no, 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 not again, not again. You know, I might lose Thorfinn all over again after being so close, after being this close to departing and taking him back to Iceland. Um, but you see that there is a shift. There is this acceptance that, okay, Thorfinn seems really quite sure of himself and he seems really quite sure of his plan. I think at this moment, he truly sees Thorfinn channeling Thor's, right? And you see his demeanor changes and he's like, I'll be ready. You know, the, sh- the ship is going to be ready to depart once you come back, right? And man, <laughs> there's that moment, you know, Thorfinn, uh, I think he says something like, oh, you know, I, I believe there's about 100 or so men that he brought. I should be fine. Even if the situation gets really bad, I, sh- I should be fine. Ultimately implying that, yeah, you know, I'll be fine. I'll be able to handle myself, you know? So how about that for confidence? Of course, as a last resort and self-defense, if it gets to that point. But yeah, that right there at the conclusion is a supremely confident individual. And then you see that Leif Erikson gets that as well. He understands that. But, you know, speaking of callbacks and things coming full circle, how about... Thorfinn changing his tune on their ancestors fleeing and, you know, ending up in Iceland. I remember, you know, I think I even spoke of this in the last episode's discussion or the one before that, you know, his his stance on that must be so, so different now, right? And yeah, that's exactly how it played out. That's exactly how he sees it now. He's proud of them. He said he's proud of them. And also, finally, I kind of wanted to speak on um, Arnheed's final goodbye, Right, her thank you to Einar and Thorfinn, right, for essentially giving her that glimmer of happiness, the semblance of happiness in a life that she uh, called a nightmare, a living nightmare, a terrible nightmare, right? So to have these two come into her life, and then especially Einar as well, so even though it hurts and it is going to hurt for some time um, for Einar. At least he understands. At least he knows that you know they did make a they they did make a change. They did make a positive change in her life. They brought something into her life, and to be able to offer something such as that, even a semblance of happiness to someone who lived such a tragic life, incredibly tragic life. At least that is something, isn't it? That is something they can look back at, and Inner can look back at. But yeah, you know, ultimately, she's moved on to a better place. She has rejoined her family. Right, her children. And given her condition, of course, she was not going to be able to survive for much longer anyways. right? Even if they managed to get her on a ship, on a boat. And to sign off, I just want to say that it's an incredible voice acting performance throughout the season uh, by Arnheed's voice actor. Most impressive. Really, really, really quite impressive. And ultimately, I think it's just a bit of a relief that she has passed on and you know she doesn't have to suffer anymore. But yeah, I think that should do it for this one, folks. If you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like. Consider dropping some comments. Give me your thoughts. If you are interested in uh, full opacity or timer-based full length, consider checking out the Patreon page and potentially supporting the channel. Uh, The links are in the description and the pinned comment. Also links to social media, uh, things like Twitter and Instagram, if that's your thing. Right then, thank you so much for joining me, folks. And thank you for your time because time is precious. It really is. And I do hope to see you again soon for episode 21. Until then, take it easy.